Hey, my name is Michael. This is my first uh, YouTube video. Uh, my channel is called The Touchdown Talk, a football channel, a lot of uh, football kind of content like NFL. This series of videos like this. that I'm going to be making right now is called uh, The Come Up. This series talks about like players who came from troubled pasts or like they lived a hard life to come into the NFL and it talks about how they like overcame adversity. So the first video I'm going to do today is the Washington Redskins running back, Darius Dice. Uh, he's one of my favorite players in the league and I thought it'd be great to start off with him. So uh, I'm going to go into like kind of his I guess, biography, kind of like just talk about his life in the beginning and then um, certain situations that happened throughout his childhood to get to the NFL where he's overcome adversity. He was born in 1997. He was raised in a poverty-stricken section in uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Uh, the town that he was from is called The Bottom, so you could tell like how poor that was. So his town, The Bottom, had a lot of uh, poverty, uh, crime, and failing businesses. Uh, for like years on years on years. On May 3rd, 2003, uh, Darius was only five years old at the time, turning six. This is when his father, Derek, was shot dead and killed. He was in an altercation at a local Denny's. After the altercation happened, someone had shot him and he died. Uh, Darius and his mother were watching the news that night and saw that a man was dead and didn't know too much about it. Then the mom got the uh, phone that it was her husband and Darius was told the news in the morning, the next morning of that. So I can't imagine how a young kid like that would understand the whole idea of like death and being like his father being murdered, never mind just like dying. So that's something that uh, probably you know took a toll on him and uh, it's a pretty difficult situation. So Darius has said in a few interviews that I've watched that he's used his dad's death as kind of like fuel to his style of running. And if you know him, you know that he's a very like aggressive runner. He runs kind of mad. He says he uses that that anger that inside him from his father being killed. A few short years after that, we all know what happened in Louisiana. Obviously, Hurricane Katrina, huge hurricane that happened. It was devastating. The uh, you know, thousands, tens of thousands of people died. Their homes gone. Everything they owned gone. Pretty much the whole life was just shattered. And you know, in Louisiana and the areas there in like Florida, the poor families they weren't told um, the information that this was happening until you know, like I think it was a few days to a week before when like other people knew before. Since they don't have a lot of money, they don't have the means to get out of the city, so they kind of had to just bunker down, which is terrible because a lot of them had to die from that. And then after that, he had went to high school in 2011 called McKinley High, but he did not stay there for long because his mother had went there. She didn't like the atmosphere there. The culture on the school wasn't good. A lot of crime and violence for children. And so him and his buddies, because they were so good at football, they got a scholarship to a predominantly white school. It was a privileged school and it was a private school. And Darius and his buddies didn't want to go there, but they knew that it was the better option to do. So they ended up going there. He had a very successful career there in football, but there was a lot of times where he'd come home crying because, you know, children were racist to him. They were mean. They'd bully him. So that, you know, was very difficult to deal with on an everyday like day basis. It. Wouldn't know how to feel with that. And his mom wouldn't let him transfer because she knew the opportunity that her son got. And she didn't want him to lose out because, you know, he's getting bullied. Even though it's a very big deal, she knew he had to stick it out. And then in his junior year, he met Stephanie. She was a guidance counselor at the school. And she formed a good relationship with Darius because she also grew up in poverty. And she knew that he had, he could like come out of poverty and do something with his life more than just, you know, a normal job he could make it in. I felt he was that talented. So they became very, very close over the next two years. Uh, he would go spend nights there, days there, family dinners, family parties. They took him on vacation with them. The family was very like, close with him. So close that in his senior year, the Catholic school board had asked for Stephanie to resign from the position or cut ties with uh, hanging out with various after school hours at her home. So she just quit her job. She thought that it was better for her to be a good figure in his life and then to keep her job. And now to go back to the football side, which is very exciting. He was great. He had an amazing season, a senior season. He had rushed for over 1,300 yards, 21 touchdowns, and the school went 9 and 2 and just lost in the playoffs. It was a very successful season. And due to those uh, efforts, he got selected to the U.S. Army All-American Bowl. So we all know if you know about football or anything about high school football, you know, it's a big deal. It's a big uh, bowl game to play. It showcases your talents to see what you can do to the next level of college. And then in that game, you win the Pete Dawkins Award, which is the MVP of that game. Due to those efforts in high school, and then what he did in the bowl game, he was a five-star recruit, and 
He's the second best running back in this class in 2015. You know, when you're a five-star recruit, you know that you're going to schools every other weekend. You're going to conferences, meeting with all these people, but he didn't. Darius didn't really want to do that. He knew he was going to LSU. He made a promise to his father. He signed his letter of intent there, and he knew he was going to LSU right away. So it just shows that even just to make it to the college ranks, all that he had to go through, and now he's still making it college. So even if he make, didn't make it pro, he's getting a degree. He's getting something that he can take and use as an adult one day. As a true freshman, he played right away, was the backup to uh, Leonard. So he had a pretty good year, rushed over 400 yards and three touchdowns. In his sophomore year, Fournette went down, and so then Darius got in, just killed it. Rushed for 200 yards, two games in a row, which is amazing. Finished the year with just under 1,400 yards rushing, 15 TDs, and fourth running back in SEC history to have more than one 250 plus yard game. So that's pretty good. He was a first team all SEC, had a great season. And then now going to his junior year, his brother Dare gets arrested for attempted murder. Just he was in a car driving these two other guys. Two other guys had left the car, shot a guy, came back in the car and they drove off. So, and then he still had a pretty good season. He was injured, but still had a decent season. Just over 1,200 yards rushing and 11 TDs. So he had a good year, but it just shows you how his brother is dealing with killing, like, I guess he didn't kill anybody, but with a, a, an accomplice in a murder. And Darius, just, he's killing it, and he's winning games for LSU. So it just shows how he can just shut it off, I guess, and use the anger he has into football. And it just shows, too, the two paths that you can take. You know, you could take one path, Darius, and use the hurt, use the, the sadness, like, the sad. anger. And you can use it into something beneficial that can help you go somewhere. And then you could be like his brother. And I feel sorry for his brother. You know, he's went the other way, took his anger out, and now is going to jail and messed around with the wrong. So, you know, that's what's beneficial with sports can really help you. Talk about him going to the NFL. He's supposed to be projected a first round pick. I'm a Philadelphia Eagles fan, so I wanted him in the. Uh, first round. I didn't end up getting him, but that's life. He's gonna go kill it in Washington, which kind of sucks for me. So he, pretty much the whole draft time, he was first round pick. Everyone was like, for sure, he's a lock. And then a couple days before, just boom, everyone just killed his draft stock. I uh, suppose he was lazy, he was rude, immature, dishonest, all these things, all this uh, fake news, pretty much. That came out against him. He dropped the second round and uh, got picked by Washington Redskins. So, he has to deal with people talking bad about him, talking bad about his name, and when he's not like that. And you can tell, like, from a guy from where he's come from, do you think he was going to be immature? He's going to be one of the most mature guys because he had to grow up quicker. He didn't have a dad in his life. So after all that, he goes to the NFL, playing in his preseason game. I'm watching it because I like him. Right, one rush, 10 yards. One rush, five yards. And I was like, mm, this guy's looking good. He breaks out. I think like it was a 30-something yard run and tears his ACL. Come on, your first preseason game, you tear your ACL. So he has to deal with that. He's out for the whole rookie season. A lot of adversity, this guy. And he always seems to take the adversity and strive on and keep getting better. And it just shows from his life, like living in poverty, and his father's murder, and then his, his being raised by a single mother with a few siblings. He's getting bullied. He's experiencing racism. And his brother's convicted of second degree murder, which is just like so hard on like a family in general, not just on yourself. His character then comes into question, which why would you do this to this guy? And then falls in the draft. So loses a bunch of millions of dollars because if he was in the first round he's getting a fifth year option after four years just getting more guaranteed money you go to the second round you're making around uh i think it's a two million over four years where you're in the first round you could be making upwards of an eight seven ten like depends on where you're drafted right so after all that let's say and he gets to the nfl and boom tears his acl like and this man get a break and you know what he says he said that he's so hungry for the next year like he's just so into it and, and you can tell because you know since i'm a fan of the eagles i know about like the watch like washington and what's going on there and that's their guy he's gonna take over and it's because he has that, that it factor you know that i got a chip on my shoulder i'm gonna kill it i'm gonna win this game so that's why i really like him and it just shows how all this kind of adversity that can hit you you can move on. You can strive for great like things, this. even though you were not put in the best situation to get that. And I genuinely think, like, he's going to come in this year. Him and AP are going to be running together. He'll get a 1,000 yards. No problem. I have no problem with that. He's an amazing runner. I really think he's a great person. Uh, from what I've seen in interviews about him, that's my first video. So if you can, like and subscribe on my video or, like, show your friends. And thanks so much.